Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. It was a moment within the royal family that marked another change of royal for the role for the Queen, from mother to beloved grandmother, where she spent years as a young monarch, desperate to prove herself and the place of the crown and country above all else, often at the expense of her children. She became a grandmother when Peter Philip was born to Princess Anne in 1977, and we watched as she transformed from a stoic, poised mummy to a warm, light-hearted gangan. If the Queen's grandchildren needed their grandmother, she wasn't bothered about how they referred to her. A columnist from the Daily Mail wrote how, after a fall at Buckingham Palace, young Prince William called for Gary, but no one could figure out who he wanted to come to his aid. Instead of reprimanding his informal address when the household questioned who is Gary, the Queen simply attended to the future king and responded, I'm Gary, explaining the young child had not yet mastered Granny. Years later, when William and Harry cheered their grandmother on in the 2012 Olympic Games opening ceremony, the boys shouted, Go Granny! a name they and all her grandchildren continue to use when referring to the Queen. With eight grandchildren and twelve great-grandchildren in her brood, the Queen had enough little successes to keep her busy for decades, as this never-before-shared anecdote reveals. Twenty years ago, when a senior policeman proudly received his MBE from the Queen, she politely asked, What do you do? I introduce behaviour plans for delinquents to help them learn to improve, he replied. The Queen flashed him a dazzling smile. Oh, really? In that case, do you want to come and meet my grandchildren? A brief tale, but a rare insight into the warmth the Queen shared with her grandchildren. According to Royal Insiders, the Queen's purported favourite grandchild was her first, Peter Phillips, now 44. She was famously seen attending his school in 91 to look at his class project, a burglar alarm. His following anonymity didn't reflect the Queen's love for him. He has gone on record saying he and his granny were very close. Peter's sister, Zora Tyndall, also had a close relationship with her grandmother, no doubt cemented by their love of horses. She was often seen as a child sitting on her grandmother's lap and accompanying her to horse shows. The Queen has always adored Zara and is so proud of her riding success, shared Ingrid Seward, a royal expert, commenting on Zara's Olympic accomplishments. They have had a lot of common as they talk about horses and the Queen has invested as several horses for her. On a 2019 podcast, Zara spoke with an imaginary Royal Rugby team, with Queen Elizabeth being the captain. Holding quiet authority over her team and giving a couple of key bullet points with a glance of an eye. When the podcast host asked Zara if she had ever had a stern look from her grandmother, she responded, I always get the good look. Third in line to the throne, Prince William reflected on his appreciation of his grandmother in the ITV documentary Our Queen at 90, stating, Growing up, having this figurehead, having this stability above me has been incredible. I have been able to explore, understand, slightly carve my own path. The Queen's relationship to William was unique compared to the other grandchildren, given his position as heir to the throne. But she still found great delight in him over the years, holding his hand as they went to church, taking him on trips and making him smile at a sovereign's parade lineup. Is Prince William's eldest son who coined the most endearing name to the monarch? George is only two and a half and he calls her Gangan, Kate Middleton shared in an interview in 2016. Even though Prince William may be a future heir, it was his brother Prince Harry who stole the heart of the Queen. Although he left his role as senior royal in 2020, it's said the two always had a very warm and jokey grandmother, grandson rapport. For Christmas one year, Harry gave his granny a shower cap with the words, Ain't life a bitch, written on it. She apparently found it hilarious. He is the giver of gifts, the stealer of kisses, and even though he married and moved away, the Queen always had a soft spot for her red-headed grandson, perhaps calling his second child with Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, Lilibet, born in June 2021, Queen Elizabeth's famed nickname growing up, is a testament to the bond the pair once shared. Four years after the birth of Prince Harry in 88, Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson gave birth to their first child. When the parents consulted the Queen to ask if she approved of the name Annabelle, the monarch reportedly said the name was too yuppie and suggested Beatrice instead. The name stuck and even though Beatrice didn't go on to become a working royal, choosing a career in finance and consulting instead, she knew she'd received the blessing of her grandmother when she was allowed to wear the Queen Mary fringe tiara on her wedding day. Allowing Beatrice to wear this piece is tangible proof of the high esteem she holds for her, a source said, and clearly the feeling is mutual, as Beatrice also ensured her new wedding date suited her guest of honour. Publicly, Eugenie, the youngest sister of Beatrice and known as her whimsical outfits, still openly refers to the Queen as Granny in public, unashamedly proving her closeness to the monarch. Growing up, Eugenie and her sister often found enjoying their Granny's company at Balmoral Castle. It's the most beautiful place on earth, Eugenie said in the ITV documentary, Our Queen at 90. I think Granny is the most happy there. I think she really, really loves the highlands. Walks, picnics, dogs, a lot of dogs. There's always dogs. 
and people coming in and out all the time. Family-wise, we're all there. So it's a lovely base for Granny and Grandpa to be, for us to come and see them up there when you just have room to breathe and run. Eugenia's playful personality was spotted at family occasions when she and the Queen could be found laughing with one another. When Eugenie, now 31, became engaged, the Queen was one of the first to know, as she said in an interview with BBC's The One Show. Granny actually knew right at the beginning she was one of the very few people. As the youngest, youngest grandchildren of the Queen, Lady Louise Windsor and James, Viscount Seven, born to Prince Edward and Countess Sophie, are often kept out of the spotlight. Louise found out her granny was a monarch by accident when she started school. Mummy, people keep on telling me that Grandma is the Queen, she said to her mother. Prince Edward and Sophie may shelter their two children from raw life, but the youngest grandchildren were seen enjoying the smiles of their grandmother on several occasions. Her warm relationships with her grandchildren both contrasted and mimicked that of her own four children, but her affection spread deeply in the adoration of her twelve great-grandchildren. Reports stood to have been what kept her going in her later years, one royal expert revealed. She delights in leaving little surprises in their bedrooms when they come to stay. Even when her great-grandchildren misbehave, the Queen can't help but look at them lovingly. During her Platinum Jubilee celebrations in June, Prince William and Kate Middleton's youngest son, Prince Louis, stole the show when he appeared on the balcony of Buckingham Palace, pulling faces at the plains above. However, it seems Prince Louis's great-granny took his antics in good humour, flashing him a grin and pointing out planes. The Queen's longevity has left her grandchildren and great-grandchildren a legacy of memories and love they were forever fondly recall their grandgan, their Queen. Thanks for listening. Please like, comment and subscribe.